Okay, my friends, here it is. The video that is gonna show you everything you need to know in order to harvest, cure, and store sweet potatoes so you can have this nutritional powerhouse all winter long. Because guess what? This is a sweet potato from last year and it's still rock solid, full of nutrition. They're still delicious. I still have a number of them in the basement and I eat them all the time. Now, if you would like to duplicate that, then watch the entire video and you'll be able to have this incredible survival crop. Actually one of the best survival crops because it's one of the handful of plants that actually has real calories and proteins and carbohydrates and things like that in it. Okay, so, uh, but first we must make the distinction between these two things because there's a lot of confusion about this. Now, this is an Irish potato, this is a sweet potato. And both of them are similar only in the fact that they have potato in their name. Everything else is different. So the Irish potato has like a lifespan where it will grow and then the plant will die back itself. And that's how you tell when to harvest it, which I'll, I'll link to that video here. Uh, but the sweet potato is totally different. It will just continue growing and growing and growing and growing. So much so that if you live in the tropical environment that never frosts, you will have to harvest the sweet potatoes every six months or so because they will just keep getting bigger and bigger. And once they get much bigger than this, they begin to get really fibrous and kind of just unpleasant. So you'll have to harvest them. But for the rest of us that do have frost, like zone 6B or 5B, 6A, Northern Indiana, where I'm at, uh, we can still grow loads of sweet potatoes, but we have to plant them and let them grow all season long, okay? Even if it says 110 days on, on the package or whatever, that, that's bare minimum. Let them go all season until three weeks before the frost. And then you will terminate the plant, dig them up, let them dry, and then put them into the curing process, which it's all very simple and I will show you this. I'm gonna take you outside and show you uh, exactly how to do this, okay? Okay, now here is footage from last year because we're still about three weeks away from harvesting this year. So I'm using the grow bag method here, which I'll put a link to that video here on how to make the grow bags. But I simply let them grow and grow all season until about three weeks before the first frost. And then you terminate the plants, cut them all the way down at the ground, and then remove very carefully all of the sweet potatoes, being very careful not to damage the skin because that will greatly decrease their storage time. Now, it's very important that you cure your sweet potatoes because if you, if you just eat them right like this, they will not be sweet. It will blow your mind because it'll taste just like a starchy, non-pleasant potato. So you have to cure them so that they can convert their sugar or their starches into sugars. So here we are, we've dug them up and we're just letting them dry in the sun for a number of hours. We do not wash them. We leave the soil on them. That's very important. Do not wash them. Okay, so now we've got them to that point where they're harvested and they're drying in the sun for a number of hours, about half of a day, so that the soil on the outside is dry. Now, we have to cure them. It sounds a lot more complicated than it actually is. All that curing is, is keeping them hot and humid for a couple of weeks. That's really it. It doesn't have to get more complicated than that. So, the process by which they convert their starches into sugars will happen anywhere between 80 and 95 degrees Fahrenheit with a high humidity as high as possible really. So whatever you have to do to duplicate that is going to be adequate. So for me, after I, after I dry them, then I just put them into a tote like this. And then I just put the lid on about uh, cockeyed like that so that they can get some air circulation. And then I just set this in the back of my car and, dry, and leave it there for like two weeks because it still gets blazing hot in the car at that time of year. And that is perfectly adequate to cure them. And it's very important that you do this. Because remember, if you do not cure them, they will not be as sweet and succulent and delicious as they could be, and they won't keep as long as they could have. They'll still work, even if you just dig them up and put them right into the storage, but curing them like that is best, my friends. Now we're ready to move on to the next step. After about two weeks in the curing process, then I moved them into the basement, or the cool storage, which is gonna be in a tote like this with some holes drilled into it so they get some kind of air circulation. And then I just keep them here in the basement slash cellar, which stays about 50 to 60 degrees Fahrenheit all year round. Even if they sprout a little bit like this, that's okay. You just pick the sprout off and they remain firm and delicious. These are from last year, my friends. So is this Tahitian melon squash. It's still super firm, delicious. And then here are some of the fermented cucumbers which are storing. This is this year's uh, onions 
and this year's uh, garlic as well, some more onions. Everything is happy down here, and now you know the secret. And that's all the more complicated it needs to be, my friends. Follow these simple instructions and you will have this stuff all year long like I have. So, if you feel like you gained something from the video, give it a thumbs up. Leave a comment, please. Whatever comes to mind, just leave a comment. And uh, there's a Garden Like a Viking Instagram account now, so follow that. And then, big shout out and thank you to everyone that is using the link in the description to make a donation to the PayPal. Also, the super thanks. All of that is greatly appreciated, my friends. Until next time.